I I like I like the rum. I'm I'm never getting rid of it. Ever. Ever. You know what? After three days of freedom to ride my bike, much more than I have been able to in the past, I am properly and satisfyingly sore and tired. Yes, I haven't had that feeling. I haven't that feeling in uh, like a, you know, sort of depressing amount of time. Here we are, shoulders sore, leg a little bit cut. Bike! Well, this bike, ready to rock for just about every occasion. Actually, all of them are ready to go, but this one because we rode it yesterday. Now, I know it's not Tuesday, but I'm in the mood to tinker, so that's what we're gonna do. The subject, the subject of today's tinkering, because it is at the forefront of my thoughts, of course, is the Felt Compulsion 650B swap. Today, we are going to swap out probably the number one questioned piece that is still on this machine, the Avid Elixir Ones, that really, that really have no place on this thing anymore. The only reason they didn't get swapped out quicker was because brakes are expensive, and I had myself convinced that they probably weren't gonna feel that different than what's on here until I rode Dan's bike around the yard for like a second. And I was like, oh, oh, these don't even really work. They just sort of give the illusion of a break. If I had to truly describe the sensation that you feel riding these particular Avid Elixirs, it would be that it's all modulation with zero bite. You can modulate how much you want it to do something but you'll never get there. Actually, maybe a better way of putting it is you're definitely gonna get there uncontrolled. Now, thankfully, I didn't have to spend this much on my brakes because Devin did for his bike and the takeoffs, his guide, his guide ours. There's like, there was a bend in them that got bent back. I do believe that this lever section is quite replaceable. So maybe we'll do that later but it won't impede performance. So let's just say goodbye to the excuse of a break that's on there now and put on a slightly better excuse for a break. SRAM, I've got to admit, I just kind of don't trust the breaks that you make. Yep, definitely put Angelo's tire on backwards while making fun of Dan for putting his on backwards the other day. Yikes. Okay. Is there still a debate on whether or not you're supposed to clamp your dropper post or not? There's like one like tiny personal bummer about going with SRAM for, for a set of brakes. And it's that when I set out to like rebuild this thing so that it was quiet and felt like new and was rideable again, was that I thought it would be fun and kind of cool to try and buy everything or acquire everything that wasn't from one of the big companies. Like I kind of purposely didn't want to run any like SRAM or RockShox stuff for suspension. So when the time came to get anything, it was like, okay, I want to, I want to work with Suntour. I want to try one of their products. And then, and then when it came time that the rebuild on the Monarch didn't really work, that I thought it would be cool to try something from someone who isn't Fox or Rock shock. And I was like, well, based on my research, X Fusion makes some pretty quality stuff with decent machined internals, not plastic parts. And I was like, well, that'd be kind of cool to use. And then drivetrain, well, as you know, me, Russ, Mike, we're all just kind of like big fans of that young, scrappy micro shift company. And they were really good for helping out with this build anyway. And they sent along the Advent 9 group set, which has been fantastic. And I knew in my mind that the next thing that was going to need to be done was brakes, along with everybody on this channel. And I very, very much wanted to stick with the unusual suspects. But when you look at the price of brakes from the unusual suspects, not to mention the usual suspects in general, they're all kind of pricey. They're all a little bit expensive. So I was holding off. Then these came up. and It was hard to beat. So, so here we are.
got yeah. out of the joys of messing with hydraulic disc brakes. The, the hose on this was too long, so I shortened it. Now, now I just need to bleed it. So that everything can be done, and I can put my difficult foamy grips back on. Bleeding edge tool. Never mind, the fluid, the power, and the air that's in there is going to have to do for now. I did not realize that once again, something in the bike industry has changed. The process, the tools, the know-how, everything for SRAM bleed procedure has been, oh, I'm sure it's been changed for the better. But not for the better of today. Looks like I'm gonna learn how to ride with just decent front brakes for the next little while because I'm not spending probably another $200 on another bleed kit. Now if I made videos the same way that other cycling channels do where they make a video over a couple weeks or stop to reshoot or something and they don't daily vlog, daily upload or close to daily upload, I too could have omitted this problem, bought all the tools, and not looked like an idiot, but I tend to show all my mistakes and post them up here for everybody to laugh at. That's, that's why you're supposed to read before you do stuff. But in my defense, this was a part. The, the brake system was a part because these brakes did come off of an internally roaded bike. So the lever and the hose were pulled apart. That's why I took the time to bother with shortening it. Otherwise I wouldn't be in this mess. It was in the mess whether I shortened the hose or not. But as a saving grace for this video and the way we're gonna end it, I know everybody is somewhat a little bit kind of curious about how these hunt uh, free hub bodies sound. So let's, let's just end it on that. Ready? One thing I will say that is funny is these guide arrows work better unbled with air in the system than either one of the avid elixirs that were on this. So definitely rideable. <laughs>